Hello, I'm Gail Tanzer, and I wrote the book, Graven Images, The Tumultuous Life and Times of Augusta Savage, Harlem Renaissance Sculptor. Today, I'd not so much like to talk about the book as about one important aspect of the story of Augusta Savage. And this concerns the systemic racism which she experienced over and over again. Since the murder of George Floyd, I think we've, many of us have experienced a cultural and racial awakening, and we want to do things differently. And we hear that term systemic racism being brandied about. And we wonder, some of us, especially white ones, what this means and how we can overcome it. Well, by now you probably know that systemic racism is uh, racism in any kind of system. In George Floyd's situation, it was the racist attitudes of policemen, but it can occur in many different situations. Today, I'd like to talk with you about how um, Augusta Savage experienced systemic racism in the art world. There were a couple of different ways in which this happened. The first was in about 1929, when she had the opportunity to pursue a scholarship to Paris to study art. She had actually won this scholarship, but when the influential uh, members of the committee who awarded the scholarships realized she was black, they said, oh, we're sorry, but you know, you would probably feel uncomfortable uh, going on the ship with the white students and, you know, they would feel uncomfortable. So maybe, maybe it's not the best idea. Well, Augusta Savage said, I certainly wouldn't feel uncomfortable. And she fought and fought to try to keep the scholarship. And many people rose up to speak up for her too, in Harlem and in the wider society. But this committee of influential artists just wouldn't budge, so she lost the scholarship. Another example of systemic racism in the art world occurred um, in uh, Augusta's experience with what we call the Harmon Foundation. In the 1930s, the Harmon Foundation was um, an influential group who uh, gave, who set up exhibitions of black art. Now the lady who ran the Harmon Foundation was white and she always had judges who were only white and they were the ones who decided whose, sculpt, whose uh, art to exhibit. Well, Augusta Savage thought this was not right and she tried very nicely to talk to this woman who headed the foundation to get some black people on board to judge the art, but this woman would not have it. And sometimes Augusta got kind of angry then. Well, the woman wrote her off. She told the Harmon Foundation that they should never ever exhibit any artwork by Augusta Savage. And this helped hurt her career. Another area where she uh, in the art world experience problems was um, as far as the white people being consumers of art. As time went on, as she got older, she, she became more and more well known for her art, although she never ended up making much money. But she opened up an, a gallery, an art gallery that only would feature black artists. And it, it, on opening night, she held a big party. She invited many influential people from the city of New York. The mayor was there, other important people, writers. It was a black tie event and she was all dressed up. The art was for sale. Everybody bragged about how great the artwork was. But when the night came to an end and she checked the till, hardly anybody had bought the art. Another area in which uh, 
Augusta Savage endured systemic racism concerned the government. J. Edgar Hoover was just starting to get his foothold in what became the FBI. At this time, Augusta and um, other people who became leaders of the Harlem Renaissance met in her Harlem apartment often to uh, read poetry and discuss each other's artwork. And uh, as time went on, they wanted to change things as far as racism went. They wanted to discover why racism kept going on and what could be done to change things. And the amount of people who were concerned about this kept growing. So they started meeting in church basements. Well, when J. Edgar Hoover got wind of this, he decided that they were an anarchist group who was gonna try to overthrow the government. <laughs> so when Augusta and her friends heard about this, they just about laughed because, you know, they're just artists for the most part, who want to improve things. But Hoover was relentless. He would send undercover spies to the meetings and then they would report back to Hoover. On top of all that, he would send his spies out and men to these people's apartments and even to Augusta to try to get them to give dirt about one another, to ruin each other's reputations and they had big, big rewards that they were gonna give out. All these people were struggling financially, but they wouldn't be tempted. So Augusta put up with a lot of systemic racism, you can see. It wasn't easy for her. There came a time when she decided what she would do about it, and that's in my book. It was a very, what would you say, momentous decision that she made. The reason I bring this out is that I feel like there is hope for our society today, as I said, and I think the more we're aware of what systemic racism is and where it's playing out in our lives, in the places we work or the places we socialize or exercise or anything, the more we can do little things to try to get rid of it. I'll give you uh, one example, if you're a teacher and 20% of the students in your school are black and only 2% of the teachers are black, perhaps you could lobby to get more pe black people hired to actively recruit them to go to college campuses and actively recruit seniors who are graduating. This is just one way that we can help. Another way, if you like to buy art once in a while, we all do. If you go to an exhibit and there's some African-American artwork being displayed, buy it, even if it's a poster, you know, a print or, or even an original. If you like it, buy it, and put it in your home. It'd be fun. So, in conclusion, this, you know, I've given my little talk here about systemic racism in the hope that each one of us can make our society a little bit better by understanding it through the lens of Augusta Savage. As I said, I wrote this book, Graven Images, and uh, it's available at Amazon. And um, I think you might enjoy writing the reading the full historical fiction account of the life of Gusta Savage. It was quite interesting, I think. And if you would like to see how I do research for my books, please feel free to check my blog, Gail Tanzer Historic Fiction. Thank you, and I hope I've helped you a little bit. Bye-bye.